2021 is the year of the electric car, not only in the automotive world, but also here on this channel as well, as we've taken a look at a number of EVs over the last seven months, whether it was the Porsche Taycan, Volkswagen ID4, Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Tesla Model Y and 3, and of course, I cannot forget the Audi e-tron. But this time, I am taking a look at the 2022 Audi e-tron GT. And this car right here just might be the most important vehicle Audi's manufactured in the 2000s. As this car is based on the Porsche Taycan, but not as expensive, and it will be going up against the Tesla Model S. So there's a lot of high expectations and hopes for this car. And that's why I am here to take a good long look at it, do a full walk around, and get you guys familiarized with this new EV. Audi's made it perfectly clear they want to go all electric by the end of next decade. And the Audi e-tron GT is a part of the puzzle to help them achieve that goal. As right now, there's not a lot of brands that are offering full electric sedans. And really, Audi's the first one to the game. As BMW will be up next by next year. And of course, they're going up against Tesla with the Model S. So in this video, we're going to do a full walk around of this EV. See how it compares to the Porsche Taycan. And also see why, if you're looking at buying buying an EV sedan at around $100,000, then maybe going with the Audi e-tron GT might be a great decision. Now before I get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Ira Audi of Peabody in Peabody, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Audi inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. We've seen a number of automakers this year announce a tentative timeline as to when they'll fully adopt an electrified lineup. But Audi has been the most vocal out of the big German manufacturers about offering an extensive portfolio of EVs. The first model to be announced and sold in this new lineup is the e-tron, a two-row SUV to take on the Jaguar I-Pace and to a lesser extent, the Tesla Model X. Next up and arriving at dealers as we speak is the e-tron GT, the assumed Tesla Model S rival, but also the more attainable Porsche Taycan that sits between the rear-wheel drive base model and the 4S. In a segment that is just beginning to heat up as Mercedes-Benz is getting ready to unleash the EQS, getting it right the first time and making a good impression is important for this model moving forward and Audi knows that having a solid EV while also being first to this market will likely pay off in the long run. Starting off with pricing, the Audi e-tron GT comes in with the base price of $99,900. But our model in this video is a Prestige, which starts at just over $107,000. For trim levels, you have the Premium Plus, Prestige, and the highly anticipated RS, that will get you from 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. Getting to the specifics, the e-tron GT is a Porsche Taycan in Audi clothing. And had that statement been in reverse, there'd likely be an issue. But for Audi, this could be beneficial as they start filling out the EV side of their lineup. Being built on the MSB platform, which also underpins the Porsche Taycan, the two have very similar dimensions, with the GT being marginally longer and wider but to the untrained eye, you'd likely not notice the difference. There's going to be many similarities to the Taycan that will catch your eye throughout this walk around, but exterior looks certainly isn't one of them. While on a basic level, the bylines lines and angles are reminiscent to the Taycan, the front fascia is all Audi, and surprisingly, from straight on, has design qualities that are almost R8-like, especially with the headlights and even the air curtains. Since we have the Prestige today, the front grille will be blacked out, whereas it would have been a traditional grey to add some colour contrast. But obviously, it does not have active air vents since the GT is lacking a gas-powered engine under the hood. Standard for all e-tron GT models will be matrix design LED headlights with high beam assist and progressive turn signals for futuristic and European feel. And overall, when you get a first glance at this car from afar, it doesn't look like an EV. And in fact, there were a few onlookers earlier in the day that had many questions about the GT and whether it was gas powered or not. With all that being said, Audi's traditional design language that blends in with the rest of the lineup is going to help enthusiasts and those on the fence get behind the wheel to experience an EV for the first time. 
Moving over to the side profile, this GT is sitting on 20 inch, five double spoke design bicolor black wheels due to our model being equipped with the performance package. From this angle, the silhouette of the e-tron is more of a grand tour and electrified version of an A7, thanks to the sloping roofline and sportback C-pillars. But having that trendy road presence helps give this car some character. You'll have body color power folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot monitoring for added safety. Then coming around to the back, you're met with sharper body lines that integrate well with the C-pillars and the rounder rear fascia. The LED taillights that run the length of the rear end is likely what you'll focus on, as not only does it accentuate a classy vibe, but the e-tron GT is also bringing styling that could likely define a new era for automobiles. Despite having this uncanny ability to be understated, it wouldn't be far-fetched to see the e-tron in a futuristic setting as Audi has set this car up to be an all-time classic in the world of EVs. Having the sportback and hatchback design will have an effect on interior room and cargo space, which we'll get into in a few minutes. Since the e-tron GT doesn't have a gas-powered motor, you will have a frunk. But first, to unlock it, there will be a button found on the driver's side door, and by pressing on it, you'll now have access to that frunk. When it comes to cargo space, there's enough room to accommodate two camera bags, which really surprised me as this compartment is pretty deep, but also you'll have the same experience with the Taycan. For performance, the e-tron GT is powered by dual electric motors to give you all wheel drive. But in terms of power, you'll have 469 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. But in boost mode, those numbers will increase to 522 horsepower and 472 pound-feet of torque to get the e-tron GT to 60 miles per hour in around four seconds. In terms of range, you're looking at somewhere in the ballpark of 230 to 240 miles on a full electric charge. However, there really hasn't been a lot of real world experience. So it's very possible that you may experience different numbers based on your driving habits and environment. Stepping inside, you're greeted by a familiar interior with a traditional Audi layout as you have a fully digital gauge cluster with Audi's virtual cockpit. The design of the dashboard is going to be almost identical to the Taycan as it wraps around the digital display and you can kind of see where features only found on Porsche would be placed. The e-tron GT for this review is also equipped with a $4,000 full leather interior package, giving the driver and front passenger RS 18-way heated and ventilated Napa leather front sport seats with a massaging function to really enhance the overall driving experience. Also by opting for this package, you receive an RS 3-spoke heated and perforated flat bottom steering wheel which has a nice feel in your hands. Then looking over to the infotainment system, coming standard is a 10-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, and of course, onboard navigation. By opting for the Prestige trim, you have the upgraded Bang & Olufsen surround sound system to amplify the audio of your favorite music. One of the key differences that separates the e-tron GT from its relative is a slightly more analog layout, as you won't have the option for multiple screens, and instead you have this one head unit with Audi's latest MMI user interface that we see across the lineup. As always, resolution and responsiveness are top notch, as a simple swipe across the screen will get you to another set of icons. And even with this user interface being exclusively a touchscreen, you can access and easily navigate your way through different menus. As we've experienced in the past with new Audis, you have a 3D camera, giving you a 360 degree view of your e-tron GT to make sure you don't hit any stationary objects. But you'll also have a variety of angles to give you that peace of mind if you are parking on the street or in a garage with small spaces. Below, you'll find the buttons for your dual zone climate control, front and rear defrosters, AC controls, and heated and ventilated seats, which should fare well with buyers not looking to rely on touchscreens for everything. Then closer to the center console, there will be an additional row of buttons for your drive mode selector, traction control, parking cameras, and driver assist features. For a cleaner design, the GT has a smaller gear shifter to get this car into drive and reverse, but you will have a dedicated park button 
so for some buyers, this may take some time to get used to. Closer to the passenger side, there will be a small circular touchpad for the volume and tuning, rather than having physical dials, which will clear up some of the clutter of the dashboard. By swiping left or right, you can bring the volume up or down, and pressing on the arrows will change the radio station. For the center storage compartment, you'll have enough room for a smartphone. And rounding out the front seating area, a fixed panoramic sunroof will let in natural light to the interior, but in the process will also make the cabin seem far more spacious. Now for passengers in the back, this is basically the same seating situation that you're going to find with the Porsche Taycan. And really it's because the Audi e-tron is really a rebadged Porsche Taycan, especially when it comes to the interior dimensions. Not much of a difference. But what I mean by that is that the second row seats do sit pretty low, but also the backs of these seats are more upright. So you're not really reclining as much as you can up front. But also, when, because we're sitting so low, I can't see what's in front of me directly. I look to my left or my right. It gives you that sports car and also Grand Tour feel. And adding to that feel is that the beams and the C pillars are pretty low. So you do have to kind of crouch a bit to get into the car. But then when it comes to the headroom itself, you have a massive fixed panoramic sunroof, which does give you a good amount of headroom right there. So uh, there's a lot of headroom to work with in that regard. But just when it comes to the outboard seats, uh, the pillars are definitely going to be in your way when you get out of the car or getting in. Now, moving over to the center seat, you do actually have some good placements for your feet. The only issue is that the center hump is very aggressive and that is going to impede a bit on shoulder room and leg room. So I think this car is better suited for just two people back here, of course, just because of how high I'm seating, sitting up, even at someone at my height, this is pretty high. Uh, but also, uh, just when it comes to shoulder room, this car isn't very wide, even though in pictures and even seeing it in, in person, uh, you would think that it's a very wide car, but for the interior, I still think this is more of a grand tour. So you're only going to be able to fit probably two people back here for sure. And then on the driver's side, the seat is adjusted further up. It's also not as reclined, and I have plenty of legroom to work with here. So if you are more of an average size adult, you're going to be just fine. But I do think that if you have tall passengers all around in this car, it's going to get pretty cramped for people in this second row for sure. So uh, what I would say is that definitely do your research. But if you're looking at a Porsche Taycan, take a look at the Audi e-tron GT. It's going to save some money. You're going to get a similar interior, similar dimensions, but also you get a good amount of performance as well, and the comfort level is pretty much the same. So uh, I would say that if you are looking at one of the two, uh, definitely uh, take a good long look at the e-tron GT. Also back here, you will have two rear air vents to go along with three level heated outboard seats. Also, we have climate control back here. And rounding out the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, you're going to receive a power trunk. And inside, you're going to have right around 14.3 cubic feet of rear cargo space, which is identical to the Porsche Taycan. So just like we saw inside, when it comes to the interior dimensions, everything is basically the same. And that's why I still feel that the Audi e-tron GT is going to be a great option for someone who might be on a more stricter budget at around $100,000, if we can even say that's strict. But right here, even though 14.3 doesn't sound like a lot on paper, you can definitely fit, I'd say three to four bags of luggage if they're not big bags, if they're flatter and you're going on a road trip with a significant other or a family member, you can definitely do that. This car is pretty practical and that's one of the reasons why having that sport back design is gonna work in this car's favor. But also you have very deep side pockets on either side of this rear cargo area. So if you have maybe car diesel equipment or water balls, you can fit them back there and they won't be thrown on your more valuable items. Now you're also gonna have a smaller compartment underneath the floor mat where you can fit your netting for your rear cargo area, maybe some uh, electronics if you are going somewhere you don't want people seeing what you have. But also, more importantly, is that you have the room where you can fit your bags or, for me, my camera gear, and I still have plenty of room for the charging cable. So that is just great to see, and that's exactly what I experienced with the Porsche Taycan. And as always, once you're done, just press the button, and the trunk lid will close automatically. 
So at the end of the day, what I can conclude here is that the Audi e-tron GT is a Porsche Taycan in Audi clothing. And that is not a bad thing at all. In fact, it's going to work in this car's favor in the long run. And that's why I think this car is going to do quite well because the Porsche Taycan, you see them everywhere in Massachusetts. So I can totally see this car uh, being on the roads the minute they start arriving at dealers. But also, if you purchased a Porsche Taycan last year, say a base model, you got to be kicking yourself because you spent a lot more money than you had to. If you waited for the Audi e-tron GT, you're getting a very similar feel and you saved a lot of money as well. But also, I think that if you're looking to buy a first ever EV in this price range and you want to have that traditional feel, you have it with the Audi e-tron GT. You have a full digital gauge cluster, you have a nice infotainment system, but also you have physical buttons as well. Whereas with the Porsche Taycan, Icon is very futuristic, where you can actually touch the digital display, where it's actually touch sensitive, but also you can have screens everywhere. It's like being in a spaceship, as if you're going to go off to space with Richard Branson. But this is a car for somebody who wants to have that traditional layout and feel without spending the Porsche price. And I understand that a lot of people who purchase the Porsche Taycan, they love the badge. The Porsche badge means a lot. But the Audi e-tron GT is going to be very important for people who are looking for an EV that's not from Tesla, that has that really more analog feel, a traditional and familiarized feel. And that's why if you are looking at buying an Audi e-tron GT and you're on the fence like, oh, should I go with it? Is it too futuristic for me? I don't think so at all. I think this is a great balance. I think it's the EV for 2021. It's just, it's a great car for someone who was just starting to get into this technology, but also wants to have that feeling of driving a car instead of driving a computer. And this is a great start for the Audi brand. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what they have in the future, specifically for the RS. But also when it comes to comfort, the seats provide a good amount of bolstering. They're also kind of relaxed and reclined a bit. So you really feel as though you're in a car that's a grand tour, an EV grand tour. And this gives me a lot of hope uh, moving forward as a car enthusiast because I want to see cars that are going to emphasize and prioritize the driver first. And I think that's what the Audi e-tron GT is doing. I understand it's not going to have all technology and some of the gimmicks that the Tesla Model S provides. But if you're a driver that wants to enjoy driving an EV. This is the car to do it in. And hopefully later this year, early next year, I'll get to fully experience this car, take it out for a test drive and just have a lot of fun with it and see what this car is made of. But I think for a first impression, this is really standing out to me out of all the EVs I have filmed so far in 2021. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.